Hey Supercross fans, Jason Wigand here. We had some great racing at the 250SX East Open Air at Dallas. We've really had great racing all year in both classes, and I've noticed more block passing, more inside outs, more cat and mouse type battles this season than previous. Maybe we've removed the calming influence of Ryan Dungey, or maybe there's the Steve Mathis nets, which have led to more berms for more block passing. But for whatever reason, we've had a lot, and we know we're going to have more. So I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step guide on how to argue about block passing. Because if there's one thing we know, block passing doesn't just create passes, it also creates arguments. And I'd argue, even in today's polarized society, some of the most heated debates of all. Because for our most situations, we have one side versus the other. Whose fault is it? One rider or the other. But it has two other elements. First, there's the group that gets really mad that there's any block passing happening at all. And then we have the group that's really mad that people are really mad about it. So let me help you with this guide to arguing. Now, the first stage of the game is to try to figure out whose fault it was that there was a block pass in the first place. Now, obviously, the rider doing the block passing you would think is at fault, but no argument can ever be quite that simple. In fact, many times, the rider who gets knocked down and passed is the one who gets blamed for he should have known better than to leave the door open. For the first time, I'm going to give some visual aids to explain how it is almost impossible to not leave the door open on a Supercross track. Ready? I don't know why this Supercross bowl turn looks more like a girl in a pair of blue jeans bending over. Or maybe I just always see that. If a rider were to come in and they take the normal fast line, which is this, the rider behind him is just going to go this way and block pass him at the exit of the corner. Now, if the rider in the lead tries to take that line, this is such a slow way to turn, the second place rider will just go like this and pass them. There's really nothing you can do in that corner. You can enter on the inside and end up on the outside and get passed, or you can enter on the outside and then get passed by the rider that cuts to the inside. But either way, you're going to get passed if the rider behind you is close enough and committed enough, and that's actually awesome. That's why these bowl turns and Steve Mathis nets exist. The idea is that if you're in second, you cannot be blocked. If you want to make the pass, you can make the pass. There, yes, is a level of protecting the inside and not opening up your turns that every rider knows, but if the rider behind you really wants to go for the gusto, there is not much you can do except maybe wait for him to get there, stop, and now you're in a cat and mouse game where you're hoping your front wheel doesn't hit his back wheel, and then you're all jammed up and on the ground hard in a corner. Now look, if you realize that it is physically impossible to cover the inside of a corner from beginning, middle, and end, and you're still trying to blame the rider who got blocked past, the next thing you could say is, well, just go fast enough and he can't catch you. Yeah. The most talked about block pass this year is Jason Anderson and Marvin Muscan in Oakland. And Marvin, even though he was the one that got put on the ground, did get a lot of heat for simply not going fast enough in the whoops to hold Jason off. So you can always use that argument too. But conversely, if you don't like the rider who did the actual block pass, you could say, well, what would Jeremy McGrath do? He never needed to use contact to make passes, and he has the most Supercross wins ever, and that is true. If you're the best rider ever, you probably don't need to make contact to make passes. Yes, if anyone wants to run the Jeremy McGrath didn't need to make contact to make passes argument, you can always counter with Bob Hanna, who we know at this point not only won races, but could presumably walk on water. And Hanna was not afraid of punting those stinking commies all the way back to Russia if that's what he needed to do to win a race or he'll just threaten to break your stinking legs in a corner. Hannah probably could have, somehow, miraculously, not opened the door all the way around a 180-degree bull turn. Or he would have gone fast enough to pull away so you couldn't get him. Either way, the Hannah argument pretty much sticks. And then you can enhance that with this one. I hear it all the time. What are you getting so mad over contact for? This is high-end athletic competition. It ain't tiddlywinks. Now, no one really knows what tiddlywinks is, so here, I'm going to do you a favor and show you. The final argument you can run is, I watched it in slow motion. That's right. You watched it 35 times in a row in slow motion. It is so obvious. It is so obvious in slow motion. Who's at fault? Although there's someone else that also watched it 35 times in slow motion, and it is so obvious, so obvious who's at fault, even though they are picking the exact opposite side. It's cats and dogs, it's day and night, it's black and white. Somehow it's obvious to you, and it's 180 degrees different to someone else who also watched it in slow motion. But just, just use that slow motion argument 
anyway. And when it's all heated up and you're talking Hannah and McGrath and slow-mo and you should have been fast enough to pull away or you should be fast enough to make the pass without block passing, you can also throw in a generational thing. I hear that one too. Uh, today's riders are wussies and they're afraid of contact or today's riders are impatient and they don't know how to make passes without contact. Uh, guys in the past use contact all the time, but that just made them grizzled veterans although they were the same age as today's riders back when they were doing it, so maybe they were just immature, impatient kids at the time. So now I'm totally lost. It's either your fault for not being fast enough to pass with or without it. McGrath wouldn't have done it. Hannah would have done it. Slow-mo proves both sides of each argument. I just left the door open, man. I have no idea where I'm at right now. I, I, just, I just blocked past myself. I just blocked past myself doing this.